Republican presidential candidate John McCain is in full political battle mode. Our fourth story tonight, McCain so determined to convince working Americans that he's not a rich, out-of-touch, couscous-eating, cappuccino-sipping elitist, that today he woke up early at his 15-acre Arizona ranch, took a nine-car motorcade to Starbucks, and then, sipping his cappuccino, got to work. A large cappuccino. We're not making any of that up. An unnamed McCain aide telling the L.A. Times, quote, this is obviously is not the conversation we intended to have. But having it, they are, thanks to McCain's confession Wednesday that he does not know how many houses his family owns. McCain today put out his second damage control ad since then, claiming Obama doesn't have to worry about his family budget. If McCain has a family budget, it includes more than a quarter of a million dollars on people to clean and otherwise work at his home. Details ahead. Obama today instead put out his second ad on the issue, helping McCain get his own financial house in order. I'm Barack Obama, and I approve this message. Call it country club economics. How many houses does he own? John McCain says he can't even remember anymore. Well, it's seven. No wonder McCain just said the fundamentals of our economy are strong. And anyone making less than $5 million a year is middle class. Maybe McCain thinks this economy is working for folks like him. But how are things going for you? A quick correction of yesterday's kitchen sink attacks on Obama, by the way. He spent his Hawaiian vacation at a friend's house, not on a private beach. They're all public beaches in Hawaii. And as for Obama making $4 million last year, the Los Angeles Times reports the McCain's made more than $6 million. And at last, we seem to have a definitive answer to this campaign's most burning question to date. According to Talking Point's memo, the McCain's actually own eight houses. Or nine, maybe ten, but no more than eleven, uh, unless you count some other ones. The Arlington condo. The condo in La Jolla on which they forgot to pay those back taxes. The home at the ranch in Sedona. The guest house at the ranch in Sedona. The servants' quarters at the ranch in Sedona. Wait, servants? Oh, yeah, the McCain budget for household help, uh, houses hold help, last year was 273000 all right, all right, where was I? Oh, oh, yeah. The vacation condo in Coronado, the other vacation condo in Coronado, the $700,000 loft in Phoenix, the other condo in Phoenix, the other other condo on a different floor of the same building as the first condo in Phoenix, a third condo on the same floor as the second condo in the same building as the first condo in Phoenix, which they later combined with the second condo to make one super condo on a different floor of the same building as the first condo in Phoenix. The McCain campaign says additional houses are not homes, just rental properties. So they got that going for them. Unfortunately, a writer for the Detroit News today claims on NationalReview.com that during a December interview, McCain also had to check with a staffer to find out what kind of car he owns. A Cadillac CTS, and the missus drives a Lexus in her $3,000 suits. Let's turn now to MSNBC political analyst Eugene Robinson, also a columnist and associate editor at the Washington Post. Gene, thanks for your time tonight. Good to talk to you, Keith. Is it better or worse for John McCain that we now seem to have an answer to how many houses he has? Oh, I think it's worse, actually. <laughs> I mean, you know, it, it, look, the impression that has been created over the last uh, 24 hours is that uh, John and Cindy McCain buy houses the way you and I would buy an umbrella. You know, you kind of buy it on the spur of the moment and you forget where you left it. Uh, it so um, this whole episode cannot be good. For McCain, because it brings to light a fact that I think most people didn't know, which is that uh, you know the McCains are are tremendously wealthy. Uh, the, the images of him as a POW, and you kind of think of him in POW garb or whatever, but he's a very very wealthy man. Um, but pikers to the other gentleman we're going to mention now. Uh, the Time.com reporting is that they have two Republican sources who say he has decided on whether or not he's informed or it's final, but he's decided on Mitt Romney uh, as his vice presidential candidate. Huffington Post reports Mitt Romney owns a home in Massachusetts, Utah Ski Lodge, lakefront house in New Hampshire, and also a beachfront condo in La Jolla, and at minimum his personal worth is $202 million. He owns a mansion and a yacht. Uh, did, did McCain hand Obama a theme to run against through the election with the stuff about his houses, and, and would he just reinforce it by picking Mitt Romney at this point? 
Well, I think he certainly did hand the Democrats a theme. Uh, as you and Craig were saying a few minutes ago, we're going to hear about this in Denver constantly. We're going to hear about this until November. Does, uh, does, would, he, would choosing Romney reinforce this? Of course it would. I mean, we kind of knew that Mitt Romney was very wealthy, and, and it sounds as if he has a better hold on exactly how many residences he owns than McCain does. So it probably didn't make it a whole lot worse, but it, but it doesn't make it a lot better, I think. Um, but something did get worse even as we were preparing this, this show. Uh, the, the stuff about not knowing what car he owned is now topped. His brother Joe, that's McCain's brother Joe, told a local news operation in D.C. that in the McCain families, specifically starting with their mother, the wives always handled the finances. And the quote was, the person who took care of all the business was my mother. My father had no idea about the family business, what oil leases he owned in Oklahoma. Well, now after getting, I mean, it, of all the bad answers you could come up to when that when that political reporter asked the question, how many houses do you do you own? The two worst are out, which is, I don't know. And now the other one is, I don't know. I have no experience with my own economy. Right. And uh, and also pointing out that, well, dad owned a bunch of oil leases in exactly. Oklahoma. Yes. You know, yes. it's funny. It's the same in my family. You know, it's my mom who keeps track of the uh, the far flung oil leases and not my dad. <laughs> Um, last point on this, and this gag is inspired by my, my friend Tom Fody, the reporter, but should Obama announce now in a gesture of bipartisanship that if he is elected, he will name John McCain as his Secretary of Housing and Urban Development? But um, um, Keith right. Olbermann, ladies and gentlemen, he'll be at the Venetian Room next week. Yeah. I, you know, I guess uh, if in, if not Secretary of HUD, you know, John Edwards can't be poverty czar anymore. Uh, that could be a, a position for him, maybe <laughs> to ensure there's more poverty for everybody else. Uh, Eugene <laughs> Robinson of MSNBC and the Washington Post. Hope you'll be joining me there in the Venetian Room in Denver. We'll see you out there and uh, and tip your waitresses. Thanks, Gene. I'll see you in Denver, Keith. If you think this presidential race has already been down and dirty, you ain't seen nothing yet. That's right, cockroaches with the candidates' heads on them. And there's Sean Hannity, actually taking an incendiary quote from Jeremiah Wright and attributing it to Barack Obama. Worst persons ahead, but first the headlines breaking and the administration's 50 running scandals. Mm, Bush. Number three, helium gate. Seriously? The Bush administration has corrupted the Department of Helium? The Amarillo, Texas field office of the Bureau of Land Management has been found by the Department of the Interior to have allowed four helium refiners to wildly overcharge the government for construction equipment. By the time the no-bid negotiated in private deals expire in 2015, that will make us pay $100 million more than we should be paying for the equipment they use to extract and refine the helium. By the way, only until 1996, only the government refined helium, then the Republican Congress privatized it. Number two, global warming gate. While well, lunatic groups like Americans for Prosperity continue to deny it's happening. This from the Bush administration's own wildlife monitors off the northwest coast of Alaska. Nine polar bears were spotted swimming in ocean water last Saturday. So what? Sounds like fun, sort of. Except they weren't swimming near their homes on the Alaskan ice. They were swimming because their ice homes broke off or melted due to the fact that summer ice is disappearing so quickly that at this rate it will all be gone by the year 2030. The grim reality behind what those wildlife monitors saw was those nine bears were on their way to either dying from exhaustion or drowning. So, Americans for Prosperity, keep denying and start swimming. Number one, can't tell the backside from the elbow gate. The comment from Secretary of State Rice after she and her Polish equivalent agreed to place 10 missile defense interceptors in Poland. She insists this is not a provocation of Russia. It isn't even a defensive gesture in response to Russia. She actually said, quote, this is an agreement that, of course, will establish a missile defense site here in Poland, a missile defense site that will help us to deal with the new threat to the 21st century of long-range missile threats from countries like Iran or from North Korea. As Spencer Ackerman pointed out online, North Korea doesn't have any missiles that can get to Poland, and neither does Iran. And even if for some reason they decided to build some, the Iranians don't have any political disagreements with Poland. It's like putting in a missile defense shield in Kansas to protect against Wisconsin. She's the Secretary of State!